Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 13th, and it is a beautiful, cool morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Only about 54 degrees when I got up this morning. Uh, hasn't warmed up much in the bit of time that, that I've been up, uh, but it's going to get up to 80, so nice day. Uh, but boy, it's amazing how quickly that temperature dipped to the point where you know, if I was going to sit outside this morning and have a cigar, which is what I like to do on Sunday mornings, I would need a jacket. Uh, didn't want to do that, so I'll spend the time with you guys instead. Got my NERP, and I just packed it with some Five Brothers, and have not lit it yet. So, I had, I had, I have a topic today. How about that? You're not going to just have a ramble. Uh, I wanted to talk about a couple, well, actually two topics. Um, but let me start off with a little story. Uh, I, the reason I'm, I've been thinking about this is I, I got a, a comment from. Uh, Our friend Kilted Piper Steve and uh, his wife Kathy, they, they both uh, were commenting on uh, the video, my squirrel video, uh, which I, I did last week. And they said, that, that it was something about, you know, the reason Steve loves stories so much is that the stories keep people alive in our, in our memories. And, and he's right about that, and I've, I've thought about that myself. And it got me thinking. Um, Got me thinking a bit, and that's always a dangerous thing. But, you know, we all know that storytelling was a very important part of life previous to our current time. Uh, yeah, the most obvious example that comes to mind are um, the, the Homeric uh, epic poems, the, the Iliad and the Odyssey, where these were poems that were recited by people in order to tell that story. It was a way of documenting history for, for folks. And you know, keep in mind, this is the period of time when there was probably not a very high rate of literacy. Uh, there weren't you know, printing presses and things like that. So documenting history was largely uh, an oral tradition. And Fortunately for us, some of it did get written down in some form, so we, we do have it now. But at that time, if you wanted to know, you know, what happened to Ulysses, you had to go find someone that knew and let them tell you. And usually that would involve uh, maybe having a nice meal and, and a fire and sitting around it afterwards and listening to, uh, to them recite a poem. I shouldn't say usually, I guess often would be a better word. So, storytelling really was not just about keeping memories alive, it was about keeping history alive. And it still is. You know, it still is. I think that's why we enjoy a good story. And I should clarify, I'm not talking about, when I say stories today, I'm not talking about like, Oh, that movie was, you know, a really nice story about a man who met a woman. And all. I'm talking about real things that happened to us. You know, telling, like, my squirrel story. As, as silly as it is, it, it actually was something that happened to me. Or, um, you know, I told a story about my, my dad taking me to baseball games. You know, that really did happen. So, these stories are, are have been a really important part of, a, of, of our lives historically. And, you know, in our, and I'm, I'm making broad assumptions here about age groups, but, but in our parents to grandparents generation, maybe in some cases great-grandparents, um, the, 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 the new development of uh, photography that was relatively inexpensive, relatively accessible, was, was quite a, had quite an impact on our lives. You know, I can remember my grandparents had this large suitcase, and uh, I guess it was just the most convenient thing they had when they started collecting these photographs, and it was filled with, with photographs. 
and one of the you know some of my best memories are there'd be some reason we'd all gather at my my grandparents' house. You know, it might have been a holiday, it might have been a birthday, uh, it might have just been a Friday night, and there was some reason. And you know, like my, my grandparents had four children. They all lived in the area. My mother was one of those four children, and we would often all wind up at the, their house. So many, many times I can remember that suitcase coming out. And, you know, I was a pretty young child. I'm talking about maybe eight, nine years old, uh, at the oldest. And I used to love it when that suitcase came out because i just go through them and, uh, you know, they'd be looking for something in particular. Oh, who was that guy at the wedding of so-and-so, you know, and they'd find it. Uh, but I'd go through all of them and, and I'd say, oh, who, who's this? And, you know, my grandmother would take the picture and say, oh, that was... John, do you remember John? Uh, uh, that was Betty. You, you know, what, remember that time Betty did, you know, whatever. And this would lead to a story. And, you know, the pictures would get put down and then we'd start hearing the story and other people, you know, if it was a story that my aunts and uncles or mom were involved in, they would start chiming in with their versions of it or, you know, maybe correcting it, maybe uh, expanding on it. And that those were great times, you know. Those are some really strong memories that I have. And it's interesting to me that, that it was triggered by the photographs because the photographs kind of became a way of, you know, much like the the, the, the poems of, of long ago were ways of kind of encapsulating the event. Now the photograph was a way of encapsulating the event. Very interesting. Very very interesting change in technology that, that aided us in our storytelling, if used properly. Then, of course, the home movie phase came in, and you know that, that was probably less accessible, but a lot of people did make home movies, and that was always a great uh, opportunity to sit down and, and actually watch the person moving and behaving in a way that you couldn't get from a picture, and it would often lead to stories about that person or that event or, or whatever. So technology impacts on this. Then we get to our modern age where we've got, you know, everybody's walking around with probably more photographs in their pocket on their phone than my grandparents had in that large suitcase. Uh, now granted they might be 16 photographs of what they had for dinner last night, but the point is it's become really cheap and really easy to photograph everything. Uh, when do we look at those? You know, when, when do we actually flip through them with friends and say, oh, I remember that? Never. Uh, we throw them up on Instagram, we throw them up on Facebook, we, we throw them out on Twitter, and then they're gone. You know, they're, they're look what I'm doing in this moment. They're not capturing the moment for, for the future. Now maybe some folks are saving them and you know picking out special ones. You know, if you have a kid it might be different. Uh, if you have children I should say, sorry. But you know by and large they have displaced this idea of permanent photographs. You know who has a who has a photograph album anymore? I guess folks that that like have photographers at weddings or uh, maybe christenings or something like that they they might get a photo album but you know who keeps just sort of a running photo album anymore and i don't mean instagram i mean one that you know is a physical solid thing that you can look through and you know who who actually makes home movies other than you know to to video the time that bobby jumped off the roof to hit the trampoline and missed or you know one of those those things. <clears throat> you know, who makes home movies of just grandpa eating a watermelon slice or something, you know, and, and I know some folks do. Um, I've seen a few uh, in, in the YTPC, you know, pe people just documenting, this is my, my grandfather, He's not, it's his 98th birthday. The point I'm trying to get at is I think storytelling now has become more important than ever because the technology has actually taken a part of that 
trigger away from us. You know, it's, it's, it's made it less likely that we're going to sit around in a group and reminisce over photographs or home movies. Uh, and certainly this sort of virtual friendship that we have, you know, where I'm very unlikely to ever sit in the same room as you. It makes it even more important. And it does keep not just people alive, but it keeps uh, concepts alive and traditions alive. So storytelling is pretty important. <clears throat> And I think it's it's even more important in this this modern age. So I've had quite a few folks get in touch with me over the past, uh, I'll say maybe four or five weeks, uh, just saying I'm getting ready to start a YouTube channel. Uh, do you have any any advice? <clears throat> and I've I've responded to them. And, you know, so I'm not making this for any any particular person, uh, but for all of you and, and for anyone else that might be thinking about the possibility of starting a channel, um, I got the, I, th I thought about it in the context of what I just discussed around storytelling, and I thought, you know, what, what's the best advice that I can give? And I've got what I'm calling the four B's. Which is just, as I thought through it uh, last night and this morning, this is just kind of the way that it, it laid itself out. So the first piece of advice that I, I can give you is to be honest. And I mean that, not that I'm expecting that there's a lot of folks out there that are just going to start fabricating tales, you know, but be honest, because you know, I, I learned at a very young age that a lie, and a lie is a strong word, but a lie hurts both the person being lied to, but also the person telling the lie. And the reason is, I learned much later, uh, is that a lie creates a false reality that you're both doomed to live in. You know, if I lie to you, you go off believing in a reality that's not, not true. And it, I'm doomed because I have to remember that I did that. I have to constantly be thinking, okay, when I talk to this person, did I tell them that I did that or did I do that? Be honest. It makes life simple. Uh, the second B is be yourself. You know, don't, and, and these are all kind of tied together in a sense. Don't try to be something that you're not. Don't try to create a persona. Don't try to be an actor. And this is different from being honest, because, you know, an actor can put on an act and, and, and still be an honest person. That's a form of lying we all have agreed to accept, I guess. But, but be yourself. Uh, believe it or not, or maybe it's obvious, I'm not any different in person than I am right now talking to you, because I can't be. I'm not... I'm not smart enough to come up with a, an alternate persona that I can be on YouTube. And I think any, any, uh, quite a few of you have, have talked to me uh, for varying lengths of time. Sometimes we've had quite lengthy conversations, a few of us. And you know, I'm, I'm, this is the guy that I am. I'm, I'm really not putting on a, an act here. And if you do, it's just more work. You know, this isn't about work. This should be fun. So be yourself. You're, you're fine the way you are. That, we're going to enjoy you the way you are. The next one is, is a little bit surprising, probably. Um, but be selfish. And the reason I'm saying that is I a lot of times hear... Yeah, I don't really think I have anything to say that anybody else would want to hear. Who cares? Be selfish. Make videos that you want to make. Make videos that make you happy. Make videos that you enjoy putting out there. And don't worry if one person watches it. If nobody watches it, it's okay. Somebody's going to watch it, believe me. Send me an email. I'll watch it. I'll watch anything. 
but be selfish about it. You know, you do what you want to do. Don't worry about what anybody else expects. I've had people criticize me because I start off my videos uh, usually saying it's a beautiful day here and, you know, this is the weather. And they say, oh, we, we didn't turn in for a weather report. Well, go watch something else then. I like to talk about the weather. But it's an icebreaker. It's something that's important to me. It's something that I know is important to a lot of you guys. It's interesting on live streams, very often the questions that I, the first question I get is, what's, what's the weather like there today? Um, I, I could have taken that criticism to heart. You know, another one is don't, don't start with any background stuff or, you know, get right into the, to the point of the video. You know, so talking about the weather, talking about, you know, oh, did you see Bob's video? He did this or, you know, that's apparently taboo in, in the broader YouTube world. Uh, get right to the point because people are just going to click away. Well, click away. I don't care. <laughs> I'm making videos that make me happy. Uh, don't let a video be more than 10 minutes. Danny Shore told me once, never apologize for the length of your video. And he said, if, if somebody else doesn't want to watch it, I'm going to want to watch it. Somebody's going to want to watch it. Make videos that make you happy and be selfish about it. If you have to have a $7,000 camera and $6,000 worth of lighting around you to make you happy, by all means, be selfish. Do it. You know, the only reason you're going to... You're going to make video number one. The only reason you're going to make video number two is because you want to. And if you're not selfish about what you're doing, you're not going to want to do that. If you are perfectly happy putting a cell phone up and talking into it and sending that directly onto YouTube as your video, be selfish. Do it that way. There's plenty of people that do it that way, and their videos are great, and I watch them all the time. Um, I personally, and this is, you know, I'm not trying to say what's, what's right or wrong, but personally, I don't like the long introductions, you know, the music and the slideshows and all that kind of stuff. It, that to me is, you know, I've seen it once, I'm not, I don't want to see it again. But other people love it, and that's fine, and the people that are doing it love doing it. They're selfish about it, and I would never say, hey, could you cut that out, because I, I can skip, you know, I, I can skip forward. Be selfish. It's an important part of this. And the last B is uh, kind of obvious from the beginning of my my chat today. But be a storyteller. You know, don't worry about your knowledge of pipes and tobacco. We got more than enough guys out there pontificating about pipes and tobacco. Uh, some of which know what they're talking about. An awful lot that don't. And I'm one of them, and I, I fall into both categories at different times. We don't need that. Yeah, if occasionally you want to say, today I'm smoking five brothers, and the way I like this reminds me of something else, fine. We like to know what's in your pipe, we like to know what kind of pipe you're smoking, but beyond that, we, you don't have to be a, an expert in anything except you, except your story. Be a storyteller, and don't assume that the story has to interest anyone, but you be selfish about the story. But tell it in a manner that's consistent with who you are, and tell it honestly. And that's the other four Bs. Be honest, be yourself, be selfish about the videos you make, and be a storyteller. Tell stories about your great-grandfather taking you on his knee and teaching you about pipes if you want to, if you have those stories to tell. Tell stories about you went to the grocery store the other day and you saw a guy dressed in a funny way. That, that's fine. We'll listen. We don't care. Tell stories. Folks, that's that's what I've got today. I hope you found that interesting. I hope a few people find it helpful. And if you got different opinions, if you got uh, different advice for the 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 start of the new 
<laughs> advice for the uh, the person starting out to make their first video. For example, one piece of advice might be never start a sentence until you know how it's going to end. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Uh, it would be great to collect uh, some more advice for, for folks like that. And what are your thoughts on storytelling? But you know what? Don't put that in the comments. Make a video about it. Tell us your story and how you feel about storytelling. We need more stories. All right, folks. You all have a great week. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.